Adam Savage from Tested here in my cave with a really fun process video. Uh, regular watchers of Tested know that I dressed as Star-Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 for Silicon Valley Comic Con in 2019. And as part of that, I replicated Star-Lord's guns from some 3D prints from my friend Joe Trash. Now, one of the most iconic parts of Star-Lord's guns is the texture patterning on the handle and grip and Jen Schachter here did all the problem solving to do what's called hydro dipping. And we're gonna walk you through the hydro dipping process. Jen, just as a top level thing, how complex and difficult of a process is this? It's not terribly complex. It requires a lot of practice. Uh, I did mm, maybe seven or eight really bad dips before I got to this one, which is like, uh, it's still not great, but it was passable. Okay. So it's, it's not, there's not a lot of steps involved, but you have to do it enough to get the technique just right. Awesome. So you're going to walk us through the main steps and where you found the efficiencies and ways to make it sing. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, I'm going to put this down and I can't wait to find out. First and foremost, I see a, a Chef Steps Jewel here, uh, immersion heater. I'm assuming it is keeping this water bath at a constant temperature. Yes, that's exactly what it's doing. So if you have, this is the sous vide device to yeah. keep your water warm, that's fantastic. Uh, the temperature of the water depends on what manufacturer makes your actual hydro dip. Oh, so each hydro dip, and you mean the sheet that is to be dipped? Yes. That system? Yes. Each one requires a different kind of temperature, each different brand? Yeah, they have their suggested temperature range for whoever makes it and the properties of that particular dip, that, oh. that film. So this one is calling for 95 degrees, mm -hmm. so I have the sous vide. Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, okay. 95 Fahrenheit. So I have the water temperature running at a consistent 95 degrees. It doesn't have to be exact. Like I found that a window of even like 10 degrees is is okay. Okay. Uh, and if you don't have a sous vide machine, you can just use a regular thermometer. I found the hot water just coming out of the tap was pretty darn close yeah. and that's just fine. But Great. we've got the fancy the fancy equipment, so why not? Of course we do. <laughs> okay, yeah. so what is the, what's the first step? So, so the film comes, our film comes in a roll like this and we've got the carbon fiber, but they have like wood grain and other different patterns. Um, there's a shiny side and there's sort of a matte side. I'm assuming, I don't know, which side is the, which side goes in and which side goes out? So the shiny side is gonna be the outer facing that's on the outside of your material. So okay. this is the adhesive side. Uh, so basically you, you get your tub of water going, you get your hot water in there. Uh, I put enough in there so that I can fully dip the object through through the film and still have some room to go below it. That's a key that. aspect of this? Yes. Um, so I picked a tub that will give us enough room to do two dips next to each other. Right. And we'll cut the film to a size that will fit roughly around our object. So around both sides? Or just one side? Uh, <laughs> so I've watched a lot of videos of professionals doing this because obviously there's a lot of hydro dipping on like motorcycles and sure. automotive custom stuff. Uh, they have a really sweet setup with a huge temperature controlled bath and they have a partition and they have a fancy sprayer hose. We're not quite that fancy. So I figured out a technique where I dip one side I let it dry, clear coat it, and then dip the other side. Okay, and that means I would assume that there are small artifacts sometimes at the edge between the two dips. Yeah, you can see here, it's not super perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and you can even see actually on the, on the Star-Lord finish ones that there's a little bit of overlap. Um, you could, if you had a, a less complex object, you could try to do it in one in one dip, mm -hmm. um, like at an angle. Right. Uh, but what I found is that once the film, when we'll see this, once the film starts to wrap over the top of the object, it starts to separate and get gooey. And I see. It's not, it's not pretty. Okay. So, so the, yeah, so the cheat that I figured out to do two-sided hydro dipping is actually a single dip, dry it, clear coat it, and then dip the, the reverse. Let's do it. Awesome. So I've got a sheet here that should be enough for us to do two dips side by side. So I'm gonna cut this and then we're gonna create a mask around the edges, like a frame. Oh. Uh, once the film is heated, it yeah. starts to kind of expand and become really, uh, it's basically just a film floating on the surface of the water. Okay, so there's like a carrier and then there's the thing you're transferring and when you get it hot, they start to separate. 
Yeah, and the pattern will actually, if you don't mask it, the pattern will start to diffuse and Ooh. like float away from itself. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. So this frame, basically the, the pros have these partitions in the bath that keep the film in the correct orientation and size. We're just gonna mask the frame and that'll keep it, keep the pattern from floating out and expanding. Got it. Yeah, I just, um, I did like a half of the, uh, of the tape, so I placed it like that. Right. And then fold it over on itself. Ah, fold it over on itself. Yeah, Got so it. Yeah, like that. All right. And this doesn't have to be super precise. It's literally just to hold its shape so it doesn't float away. And one thing that was super important with Star-Lord is the direction of the pattern. Ah, really? So I had to do a little bit of thinking in reverse of like, okay, we want it to be in this direction. If I'm dipping it, then when I flip it, it's gonna look this way. And it's like a diagonal across the part. It's not lined up with it. Right, okay. Yeah. So a little extra tricky. If you're doing something organic like wood grain, obviously much easier. Fancy frame, almost ready. Awesome. Okay. So put some gloves on unless you want to hydro dip your hands too. Oh yeah, it gets on your skin. <laughs> oh yeah. Once it's got the, the adhesive, the activator on it, it'll just morph around. Would it be a good way to do like tattoos? It like, would be fake tattoos? It would be kind of cool. <laughs> I don't know how long it would last, yeah. but. All right, so the, the placement of these in the, water, in the water is actually a little bit tricky. Yeah, um, and it goes the shiny side down. Shiny side down. Okay. And you want to place it so that it doesn't, um, water doesn't like come over the top of it. So I actually kind of folded it just a little bit. Uh huh. And then you can even like, I may even actually do it like a little bit like this. Really? Yeah, just basically so that you can get a good, a good position on it so that you can place it in the water and then sort of gently I don't know. Let me watch you roll. do it. So I'm gonna go like this. Oops, see, and I already got a little bit of water on there. Um, I'm also gonna take the jewel out of the water so oh, that yep. we don't. Oh, um, right, so no agitation. Yeah, so that it's right. nice and. I guess it's gonna stay at. Yeah, it'll, it'll stay hot enough okay. for us. Great. There we go. Nice. Oh. Uh, that's that's no? okay. Okay. That'll be all right. So you can see on mine, mm -hmm. the the pattern's starting to like, almost like gel a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do have some bubbles here, which are not ideal, but they'll be okay. Mine seems really wrinkly, but it. Yeah, it's, uh, it sort of puckers up first, and then once the heat reaches enough level for the film, it'll start to spread out and kind ah, of soften. Ah, so I see that, all right. Yeah. And this is um, this is the activator that was recommended for this particular film. Okay. Sometimes you can buy them together. Oh, this looks nice and mm -hmm. drum tight now. Yeah. Okay. So now you spray with the activator. Yep. Uh, so we'll spray the activator in like a crosshatch pattern, and overlapping the last layer. Okay, like a standard one. spray paint pattern. Yep. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. Whew. Okay. Um, so I'm holding it kind of at the, the corner edges so that I'm not gonna get my fingers in the, in the dip anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then I wanna go in kind of at an angle and you'll see the film start to wrap around it. So mine's already dissolving, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna try to go in okay. the corner. So I'm gonna go in this way. Oh, wow, crazy. And then you want to go through the film all the way down underneath of the water. All right, here I go. Go I'm for it. I'm try it. Here we go. Nice. Wow. That was far out, man. And so now I can just kind of turn it over? Yeah, just kind of pull it through. Yeah. Oh, nice. That looks awesome. Wow. That's a really good first try. 
I, I respond know, I, well to positive feedback. I don't know why I'm surprised that you picked it up on the first try. But, um, so yeah, you can get better at the technique and kind of like depending on how your object is shaped, figure out what angle to dip so that you'll get it to wrap the way you want. Right, right, right. these right. came out actually really good. That's amazing. Yeah. That's a, it's like science fiction. Um, and we actually both got a pretty good angle on our... In our pattern. Yeah, I was just guessing at the last minute because I was like, I don't have any more time, just do it! <laughs> um, awesome. So let's put these down for a moment, and what okay. we'll do is um, we have to wash all the slimy activator. Ah, off. okay. And we do that in a sink, not in our bath. Yes, is that right? Yes, none of that. This has all got dissolved activator and, okay. and film. Warm water is fine. Warm water, and then just really gently because you don't want to um, wipe the film off. Ah, okay. I might actually. Um, I mean, Go with normal? Yeah. All right. And then, yeah, just very, very gently ah. get this. And you'll feel it's kind of like slimy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really slimy. And then the other trick that I figured out for um, for doing the two-sided is I just use a slightly abrasive sponge yeah. to, to wipe off where I want the seam to be. Ah. And you so you can, can, be, can you be pretty precise about that? Yeah. I mean, depending on how... Uh, how good you are at sponging, you could uh, you could just kind of remove where the uh, the film overlaps onto your second side. Right, right, and right. I can grab that sponge over there. Oh yeah. So I'll just give that a little bit of wet, and then I can kind of scrub away. Oh, look at that! It just comes right off. Mm -hmm. So you can actually clean up artifacts that may that would might mess up the other side when you dip it. Exactly. Exactly. All right. All right, this feels really cool. I mean, yeah. I can see some spots for me touching a little too vigorously there, but. Yeah, it does, um, like, yeah, my little corner It becomes very here. volatile, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll let these dry. Okay. And uh, we can clear coat them and then do the other side. Yay! And these are so beautiful. Um, before we dip them in, I forgot to ask you, how did you prepare the surface, the blank surface for receiving the hydro dip? Uh, that's a great question. So we started with 3D printed parts. So mm -hmm. they obviously had a lot of layer lines. We hit it with a ton of this uh, sandable primer. Oh, great. Um, yeah. Lots of sanding, lots of primer. So we got a nice smooth finish here. Mm -hmm. um, cleaned up all the little artifacts from 3D printing. Uh, then I hit it with a uh, metallic paint, and mm -hmm. that can be any color that you want underneath of your hydro dip. So we did a light, uh, sort of a light chrome, almost a pearlescent kind of. Yeah, but like you a could warm do, chrome. Yeah. yeah, you could do gunmetal, um, or if you're doing a wood grain, you could do like a yellow undercoat. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, and then it just goes into the dip. Now after the first layer that we put on. Yeah, that's so. The, after we did our dip, you then did another bit of preparation, which yeah. was what. So we we'd washed off all the all the slime, kind of sponged out to get mm -hmm. the seam nice. Then I um, let them dry. Yeah. And then I hit it with some clear coat. Okay, like a like a Krylon gloss coat or yep. something like that. Uh, Okay. Just a nice clear gloss, and what that lets me do is when I do the other side and I get those little gooey overhang pieces, I can then scrub those off without damaging the first layer. Brilliant. Oh, okay, now I see. I mean, within this, what is the most difficult part you encountered within this process? Uh, getting the film to behave the way that you want and definitely the technique of, of dipping. Like, depending on the shape of your object and where the undercuts are, mm -hmm. figuring out the best angle to sort of plunge into the film so that it'll wrap the way you want around your shape. So it, it sounds like, I mean, when we embark on trying to learn a new technique like this, we go and watch YouTube videos, mm -hmm. we read articles about it, and none of it ever quite answers all the questions that we have. So. Even though we're trying to do somewhat of a comprehensive look at this, what would your recommendation be to someone who wanted to try this for the first time? How many iterations should they allow in order to get to know it? I would say at, at least five or six. So I made some little dummy, some little dummy wood prototypes oh, to test. I was them. wondering what these were. Yeah, <laughs> I um, saw them yesterday. So some like you know low pressure, just test on the shape. Right. Um, also. Make sure to change the water between dips. I uh, made the mistake of being lazy and not dumping out all the water and refilling. And the activator, you can kind of see there's a film on the yeah, surface. Yeah. Uh, it's in the water, so if you put a new piece of film on there, it'll start to dissolve in a way that's not pretty. 
So you want re reproducible results. It requires a very clean working uh, environment. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so after five or six tries, I started to get the dipping technique. Um, and if you can't even get the actual shape that you're going to dip, I think that would be a great way to practice because then you'll know how the film interacts with that shape. So if you're making something that's 3D printed, you think a person should actually print like five or six ahead of time before the hero one to get to know it. I, not everyone has that kind of luxury, but I agree. Like you've got to iterate just to know what you don't know. Sometimes I'll do something just to screw up at it so that I can watch a video and be like, oh, there's where I screwed up. Yeah, yeah, and I watched a bunch of the pros dipping, like they'll do huge you know, panels for the interior of a car in this carbon fiber. And it's like nerve wracking to watch because they have to get it right. right. But they have the technique master where they dip and then they kind of roll the shape through the film. And it's just like, okay, he knows what he's doing. So it, it, they end up, having imbued in them what you were learning, which is like the right mode, because it's not just like dropping it in, no. it's not plunging, <laughs> it's this whole, it's a relationship between the object and the hydro dip. Yeah, and it's an interesting material because it's like floating on the surface of the water and you have to, yeah, kind of swim through it in a way that, that wraps the way you like. I noticed we got a little bit of double crossover here, but what you're saying is because we clear coated the first side, we can scrape some of that away. Yes, okay. yeah, you could kind of sponge that off. And then I think on the, the final hero prop, we actually did um, a little a bit sharpie. of, I think I remember going in with a Sharpie, mm -hmm. uh, not a Sharpie because Sharpie tends to have a purple. Yeah. I went in with a different marker and just sort of hand drew some of that pattern. Yeah, to kind of stipple in where where your carbon fiber, it, it wears away, it rubs away in little sections. Yeah. Uh, but you can kind of fudge that in and it, it all just blends blends together. Uh, full disclosure, um, we actually planned to shoot this video last summer, uh, at, or this summer, uh, and for various reasons we didn't get around to it till now, but Jen, I just, I wanted to thank you for putting this all together for such a complicated, uh, uh, difficult, and confounding process. The end result is really beautiful, and I hope people try it, so thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs>